So in this Outlaw solo that I've kind of designed, there's a couple of key features that I just want to briefly touch upon before we wind up doing the actual solo. Uh, there's some new techniques, and I'd like to go through them one by one, is the idea of chicken picking. Well, the idea for that is you kind of want to make a clucking type of sound, uh, no different than, you know, in its name, the chicken picking. Um, my style of doing that is a, the use of a couple of different things. So it's the use of dead notes. So I've kind, I'm kind of like doing so. If the, here's a double stop uh, example, um, you're, and you're also manipulating some sort of uh, note and bending it some sort of way. In this case, we're taking a little, uh, and we're thinking of E. And what we're doing with that right hand is we're, we're going to be, the pick is starting on the G string, and then your middle and your ring finger are going to be grabbing the upper two strings. And don't worry too much about the bend. It's kind of a, in between a quarter and a half, uh, half bend. Okay, so you're going to see that. Uh, the other way that I do uh, like to do a lot of chicken picking is... I guess my own way. I don't. I. I don't know how else to describe it. You're going to hear it as so. And what I wind up doing in this is I'm going to be actually taking the pick, and I'm going to be hiding it. So you get this boom, boom. So now I've got a thumb that is not used by the pick, and it allows me a little bit more. Allows me four fingers basically to to wind up doing stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that uh, thumb on a string. And I'm going to be hitting a note and bending it. So let me just play it, and then I'll explain the technique. So what I like to do with that is I'm going to be using the thumb to initiate the attack, and I really want to stop that note right there and then have control over, almost think of it as an on-off switch, okay? So, And I want to be really in control of that, and I'm going to be doing that through here. So it's the interplay between that middle finger and the thumb that where I get that from. And you're not doing anything incredibly difficult. That would be something that would work for E as well. So um, what I'm doing is I'm just a little bit of a bend. That's all you're doing. You're outlining. You're playing an E, a B, and an E. So you're not even outlining uh, the 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 chord completely. You're just kind of doing a power chord, fifths. So, and that's another thing that you're going to see uh, in in outlaw music is sometimes they omit uh, certain uh, types of uh, chords. You're kind of going to be thinking of more like power chords, although it's not rock and roll. But so let's get back to this lick. So as I talked about before, you're going to be uh, bending most of the time. Your B, your B string is always going to go up. Your G string has the availability to go both up and down. Now you switch. So I would actually bend that one down. Okay, so the notes are not incredibly difficult. So it has that type of vibe to it. So you're going to see that as far as uh, uh, the chicken picking aspect goes. Um, you're, there's going to be several different licks within the solo that kind of have that. The other thing that we're going to wind up doing is we're really going to think there's two different kinds of bends as far as I'm concerned in country, and there's going to be kind of your rock and roll bends. I would call that more, you know, it's more rock and roll based. As far as pedal steel uh, goes, you're going to be you're going to be phrasing it closer to what a pedal steel would be doing. And keep in mind, pedal steel plays their guitar down like this, and they have uh, foot pedals and levers, uh, knee levers to manipulate the note. And those notes can be manipulated a half step, a full step, up to a step and a half, uh, depending on what kind of steel it is. So we've got to kind of think like a steel player. So how do we think like a steel player? Uh, what do we do that's different? Well, what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to be approaching notes a little bit differently. So you're going to be doing pre-bends. So you get something like this. Um,
Okay, so we've taken that note and it's a half step bend. And you can pick all the notes on that. That's that's just a little little uh, example of what that is. But you're pre-bending, then releasing, and then getting off of that note. The other thing about pedal steel bends is let that note rise and let it fall. Part of it is having the beautiful part, no different than our open string licks that I've talked about, is where you have this tension and release. And by having that, that's one thing that guitar players and very few people do uh, have. Pedal steel would be a great example of that as well, is where you can have one note and a note kind of rises against it and then resolves within uh, the lick itself. That's always cool. It's a cool way of uh, doing things. It makes it very melodic and uh, sings quite a bit. Because as a vocalist, you're not, you're not robotically hitting one note, then another. You're kind of maybe scooping a little or, or jumping just a little bit, but there are notes in between those notes. That's an important concept to kind of have. So you got this. Okay, so that lick right there. Once again, it's just using the ring uh, finger to bend and the pinky to, to stay on one note. So some pretty pretty simple basic concepts on that, but you're going to see that in the solo. It's important to kind of understand. What we're also going to wind up doing is uh, we're going to have uh, some other types of bends, okay? And what I mean by that is you're going to have oblique bends, which would be something like... So what that is doing, and we've done it before, but th this is a little bit different, is where you actually have a note and then you move from that note while holding a bent note. So you get this. You're gonna see that quite a bit in this solo. It's a great little uh, way of creating, once again, tension and releasing it within uh, that structure. So as far as uh, this solo goes, what we're gonna wind up doing as well is we're gonna enter mingle some open string licks. We're basically gonna be doing a bunch of different techniques and going through and combining them and just twisting them around over this progression, which this progression will be as follows, which is what you're gonna see a lot in typical outlaw music. So that's the feel. And let's put the, let's put the phase on just because you're gonna get, it, it's a good tone to have. If you have the pedal, you're gonna be using it on a song like this, most likely. Now, if you noticed, pretty much there's a couple of chords that are going to be in there that are not in the key. The one thing with this is this is where playing over outlaw stuff, like the, the uh, blues scale works really well because you have some outside chords. Your flat seven, which is going to be D, and your G, which opens up a lot of possibilities. The cool thing is the back end of this phrase, it really leads itself right into the chord E. So kick back, relax, and we're gonna wind up, uh, I'm gonna give you a performance and then we'll do a breakdown. There's a ton of different stuff in this and uh, I hope you dig it. 